بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد و علی علی و صحبی و سلم اما بعد Continue on in our dars in fiqh and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us and bless us with ikhlas with abad and bless us with benefit from these durus in this life as well as the hereafter Ya Rabbil Alameen We reach in our basic fiqh lessons from fiqh, uh, from hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the, from the book Umda Tahkam by Imam Maqdasi rahimahullah ta'ala explained by Shaykh Ali Bassam rahimahullah ta'ala and may Allah have mercy upon all the ulama of the salaf and those who came after them and may Allah be pleased with the salaf radiallahu ta'ala anhum beginning with the sahaba to rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we reach the hadith or a hadith regarding Khufain, meaning to wipe over the socks. And we'll mention two ahadith and some of the issues that the ulama mention with regards to these hadith and wiping over the sock, the socks. Wiping over the socks is something in the Sharia, it's mishroor. And the scholars, they mention that it is a ruchas, that it is something, uh, it is not an, ex- maybe you could almost say an exception to the rule or something, an, 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 a, something that is permissible and it's from the principle, it fits under the qaida or principle in the sharia, which is that the scholars mention al-mushakka tajlibu taysir. That when there's a difficulty, it necessitates an easy way of doing something. So, for example, if we always had to take our socks off for wudu, maybe that would be difficulty, a, dif- a difficulty for us. And this is why the Sharia, it comes with ease. And the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, has so many ways of making things easy for us. That yes, there may be some difficulty in doing ibadah. Ibadah, that's why we're tested. And that's why there's such a great reward. Because if it was just a matter of sleeping your way to paradise, then we would all, all of us would go to paradise. But that's not the case. Instead, we do have to struggle and strive. And we have to strive to follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, after the salatu wasalam. And from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is Masa al is wiping over the socks. And as we mentioned, it, it fits under the principle amongst the many principles in the Sharia, you know, of following a ruksa, something that is uh, where it's permissible under cert- certain circumstances, with certain conditions, and that it is there to make ease. And the uh, Sheikh uh, Ali Bassam, he says, Well, Mas'al al-Khufayn, I believe this is his statement, or this, yes, this is his statement. He says, Well, Mas'al al-Khufayn, min al-Rukhis, alati yajibu Allah, yuhibbuhu Allah, and tu'ta, wa man tashilat, hadahi sharia samha. He says that, by wiping over the socks, or wiping over the leather khufs, that this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves because when there's a ruqsa in the sharia, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves these things that you take the permissible, easy way out. For example, when you're traveling. When traveling, it's permissible what? To combine your prayers and shorten your prayers. That is a, a, a ruqsa. So by taking that ruqsa, some of the ulama, they even say that it's an obligation to uh, shorten the prayer because you're showing ungratefulness to Allah by praying your prayers in the normal uh, fashion, by uh, praying them 
their regular units instead of shortening it. And that shows us the importance of the ruchas, that we should strive to do those things that Allah has made easy for us. We're not going to talk extensively about it. We're going to focus more on the hadith and what, what the shaykh is bringing here because there's a lot of other masail when it comes. But I think this is sufficient for us to be called a basic dars in fiqh. That's what our durus here are, basic durus. We're not going too in depth. We want enough to where we know how to practice. And we know how to have some... Uh, we, we know how to deal with some of the evidence of the sharia because our lessons in fiqh are coming from a book in a hadith al-ahkam. You know, hadith which deal with jurisprudence. So, they're showing us how to practice. And we stick with those and sometimes we go more extensive in some of the issues and sometimes less so. But we're going to use this metan here and concentrate on it more so. So using the khufain, I mean wiping over your khufs is a rukhus. An Mughirata ibn Shu'ba qala kuntu ma'a nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi safarin fa ahwaytu li anza khufayhi fa qala da'ahuma da'ahuma fa inni adkhaltu muhuma tahiratayn fa masaha alayhima ruahu Bukhari wa Muslim In this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the hadith of Mughira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that I was with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during travel and I wanted to remove, he wanted to serve the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by removing his socks, removing his leather khufs. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stopped him and said, Leave them. For verily I entered them, meaning I, 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 I wore them, and I was on Tahara. I was on, you know, I was, uh, I had wudu. And they, uh, you know, I was on wudu, but uh, they were pure. And then he wiped over them. And this is collected in Bukhari and Muslim. In this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam First the, uh, the Shaykh Rahimahullah Ta'ala He mentioned some of the differences or the ikhtilaf of ulama here And the ikhtilaf he mentioned is only with one One group وَكُلُّهُمْ فِي النَّارِ لَوَاهِدَةً كَمَا قَالَ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم. All of them in the hellfire except one So this, uh, as is mentioned in the hadith, uh, the, the Shaykh is saying the only ones who reject this hadith and these ahadith about wiping over the, the, the socks or the leather khufs or socks is the Shia. They and also there's also a narration on Imam Malik uh, rahimahullah ta'ala and he said وَرُوِيَ aidan an Malik وَبَعْدَ sahaba. and he said some of the sahaba However, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah uh, said those narrations are weak, they're da'if, they're uh, not authentic, inauthentic narrations on those Sahaba. And as for Imam Malik, it is affirmed that uh, a narration on him, however, those people who followed his madhab after him, many of them believed that it was permissible to wipe over the Khufain. As for the Shia, they go against the consensus of the ulama and they totally reject wiping over the Khufs. Some of the differences regarding this, it goes back to the ayat of wudu, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states uh, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, وَأَرْجُلِكُمْ That where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about wiping over the feet, so then they use this 
to as a and it gets into the Arabic language so this is really not the place to go extensive into the reasons why but they read the ayat with a different kira and from that they deduce that it is not permissible that you must in fact uh, wipe over your feet and as Muslims we know that we wash our feet but we can wipe over our hoofs as these ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam illustrate for us. Those are just some of the basic differences with regards to this hadith. Some of the benefits, something important, one of the conditions for wiping over the socks the scholars, they mention several conditions. Some of the conditions are that it should, for example, the socks should cover the area that you make wudu with. So if you have socks that are really short, below the ankle, then they would say that it's not permissible to wipe over those socks. That you have to wash your feet. Another thing that the ulama mentioned so that it should cover the area that also it should not and part of the covering is that it should not have big holes in it but some of the ulama they refute that and I believe that is the strongest opinion that it is not correct that it has that if you have holes in your socks even if they're big holes that that's a problem that's problematic why because as those scholars that mention, and there's there's nasus as well, and I don't have any of the nasus for us today, but they mention that the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, not all of the Sahaba, you know, were wealthy, and some of them they had torn clothing, some of them they were they were not blessed to have uh, even even their hoofs had holes in them. So that's evidence, and they still wiped over them. That's evidence that to show us that it is not a condition to. Uh, have perfectly uh, beautiful hoofs that have that do not contain any tears or holes. Those are and uh, but one of the the most important agreed upon condition regarding wearing hoofs is that a person must wear the hoofs on tahara, as the Prophet ﷺ said, "For inni adkhaltuhuma taharatain." that the, the hoofs themselves should be clean, they should be tahara, tuhur, uh, ta, they should be uh, tuhur, they should be clean. Meaning they should not be made out of things that are muharram, they should not be made out of pig skin uh, or, or something like this. And that they should not have najasa on them like uh, urine or uh, defecation or anything like this. And the second thing is that not just that the hoofs are clean, but that you are clean. You have to enter your uh, hoofs on ta tahara. What does this mean? Let's explain this. That if, for example, I have wudu, and in fact this is the situation. I have wudu right now. And before I left my home, I made wudu and then I put my socks on. So from the time, this is another issue, we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. I put my socks on. So now, I, and, and just a minute ago, I, I broke my wudu, Allah, and I just made wudu in this river here that we have in our background. When I made wudu, all I did was wipe over my socks. I could have even wiped over my shoes because I was praying in my shoes and I had tahara when I was wearing my shoes. So I could have just did that, but I took off my shoes because I probably was not going to pray in my shoes. And also I got very wet in the water when trying to cross a log. So this, for my comfort, I took my shoes off. So I just wiped over my socks. Why? My socks were pure. And my socks also, uh, and, and I had wudu, I had purification before. Another benefit I want to mention, or another very important aspect, because you'll find some ikhtilaf in, with regards to these condition, is talking about the muddah or the time period. Uh, 
there's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu where the Prophet والسلام, said, uh, or that the Prophet sallallahu wiped. Uh, he said, alayhi salatu salam, which means. Fil Mukim Al Yom Walil Walil Musafir Thalatha Ayam Wale Ali Hinna. Or Kamakala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he, alayhi salatu wasalam, said that for the person who is a resident, that they can, that you can wipe their, over their their hoofs, their leather socks, or their socks, that's another issue of wiping over the socks, and it is permissible to wipe over your socks, it does not have to be leather, it does not have to be leather hoofs, exactly, it can be anything that covers, as long as it's not see-through, and it's, um, you know, that it is covering those areas of wudu, bi ta'ala. So, that, uh, for the person who is a resident, they can wipe over their socks, basically for what amounts to about 24 hours for from the time of their first uh, wiping. Not from the time that they made wudu, not from the time uh, that they made their first, uh, uh, but from the time of when they wiped their socks the first time. Meaning, since I made wudu and I wore my socks, and then I broke my wudu and I Wore, uh, I, I put my socks on. When I, I just made, just now, I just made wudu and I wiped over my socks. From that first wiping over my socks is when the time begins. A day and a night. So meaning basically 24 hours from the time that I, so if I did that say, for Dhuhr, and it's almost Dhuhr now, then to Dhuhr uh, the next day would be the time frame. Also, in addition to that, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, as we mentioned, that for the traveler it is three days and three nights. And that shows us also the Rukh, another Rukhas, to make ease for the tra uh, traveler. Al Mushakka Tajlibu Taysir. Uh, that uh, a difficulty necessitates ease or something similar to that you may translate it as meaning that the Sharia comes with ease when there's something difficult that there's an, uh, uh, an, an easy way the Sharia reconciles that and that we should strive to take the easy route when it is necessary to do so and when we are in need to do so as long as it is mishru that is permissible and those are some of the issues, and there's still many, many issues, but we'll reserve, we'll leave off right there, and we'll just talk about a few. We'll talk about uh, a couple of things, these benefits from this hadith. The Shaykh mentioned, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said that this illustrates for us the permissibility of wiping over the socks uh, when making wudu. And that when we wipe, we just do it once. So when we wipe, you can just, if you can see my foot, I don't know, but you can take your hand, it's wet, and you just go like that. And so you wipe over the top of your sock, of course not under the bottom of your sock, because that is the way the Prophet ﷺ did it. And you do it once. Another benefit of this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, is that it is one of the conditions, as we mentioned, is that a person has to enter their khufs being on tahara, meaning they, they have to have wudu or ghusl, whatever, when they put on their socks. Otherwise, for example, if you just wore some socks and you were not, you didn't have wudu, then when you, it came time to do wudu, you would have to take your socks off, make wudu. Then the, and put your socks on. Then the next time you wanted to make wudu, you would not have to take your socks off, you could just wipe over your socks. So you have to enter into your socks with wudu, with purification, being on, being uh, uh, on tahara.
Another benefit is derived from this hadith is that it is recommended to serve the, the scholars and those people of great uh, status. And in addition to that, even your, your parents is another thing, to try to serve them, and may Allah forgive us of our shortcomings, to try to serve them, um, assist them in whatever they need, physically, mentally, and spiritually. Moving on to the next hadith because it's very short. عن حذيفة بن يمان رضي الله تعالى عنه قال كنت مع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في سفرة فبعلا وتوضى ومسى على خوفي رواه بخاري ومسلم In this hadith of Hudayfa رضي الله تعالى عنه he said I was with the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم during travel and he urinated أكرمكم الله and then he made wudu then he purified himself for salat then he wiped over his socks. So that shows us, <coughs> although in this hadith, it says, Fi Safar. Uh, the Shaykh, when we were studying this, Shaykh uh, Abdullah Hajar, may Allah preserve him, he mentioned that this is in this book, <coughs> that this is a mistake in the text. That in some of the copies of this book, it says fi safar. So it says, Kuntu ma Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam fi safar, fa bala wa tawadda. And some of the uh, books, it doesn't mention that he was traveling. So I just mentioned that it was traveling. The Sheikh said that it was not during travel, and this is a mistake in the in this copy of the book. So as the Sheikh said, bi Taala, that this is a mistake. So actually, it was not during travel, but they were together. He was with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the Prophet ﷺ then went to use the restroom and then he والسلام, made wudu and he did not take his socks off but rather he wiped over his khufs. And from this hadith, one of the things uh, Shaykh Ali Bassam mentioned, Rahimallah Ta'ala, which are very beneficial. And he mentioned, so Shaykh Ali Bassam, he mentioned here, he mentioned with that it was during travel. So, if this were the case, anyway, he says that it is permissible uh, to wipe over the khufs during travel and that the He said that the time period for wiping, and this is all that we've already said, is wiping over the khufs, and also you can wipe over your imama, and there's conditions for that as well. Also, you need to enter it, and a woman, if she has a hijab that is difficult for her to take off the khimar, she can wipe over khimar even. So this is from the e, the rukhas of the shara, that is permissible to wipe over the khimar as well, or the imama. If it's an imama that's difficulty and it has a tail, as they mentioned, they mentioned some conditions for that. And that one can do this up to three days and three nights if they're a travel traveler, <clears throat> and they can do it uh, one day and one night or 24 hours, as he mentioned, uh, for the person who's a resident. And, and as we mentioned, he said, and the most correct call, and this is the one, the most correct opinion re related to this, and I am of this opinion, as the, the Sheikh is mentioning, he said that, that you begin that wiping over the socks, he said this is the most correct call from the first time you wipe, not from your wudu, not from when you wore the socks, but you begin your 24 hours or what have you, from the first time you break your wudu and you have your socks on, and you wipe. The first wiping is when you begin it. So 24 hours from the first time you wipe, then you, you can wipe your socks up until that period. Uh, another thing here is that, that, that must be mentioned is that if a person needs to make ghusl from Janaba, of course if they have the major uh, impurities that they've uh, had s sexual relations, akramakumullah, or ejaculated, or what have you, that from those major impurities that they must uh, make ghusl. So making ghusl, of course, you have to take your khufain, you can't wipe for that. Another uh, thing we want to mention is also 
he, that it is distinguished because there's these are other fiqh masail that come into play that when a person is injured so this is important ahkam we need to know for example if a person is wearing a cast or something like that they've broken a limb or what have you or, or something and they cannot and it's a place where they make wudu that is permissible to wipe over those things as well so you can wipe over your cast or what have you if it's not going to damage it and the doctors are saying that it's you can get it lightly wet you know just with very wet uh, light lightly wiping it then you can uh, also wipe over your uh, those those things which are like your cast or what have you if it is something which is difficult very difficult to take off that you cannot remove and you cannot get that area wet so there's so many other missile that will will come up for another daughters maybe we'll, we'll speak more extensively about but that was very important it gave us some of the ahkam related to wiping over the hoofs the last benefit we want to mention the sheikh said and as for wiping over an area that is going to be harmful to wipe and get wet and that a person is fearful of having harm from that then they should not wipe and instead they should make tayammum so that's very important for example if you have a special you've just had a, an operation and you cannot wet those bandages because if it if they get wet then they will uh, it could le it could be an opening towards infection then in that case you would um, it would be legislated for you to make tayammum using clean earth instead of wiping over those limbs and the sheikh is of the view he says uh, but if you if it's only one of your limbs then you would you would make tayammum and you would uh, clean or uh, make ghusl for the rest of your limbs the other ones that can be exposed to, to uh, water. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and forgive all of our sins. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.